Greetings one and all. How is everyone doing? So it is currently uh, 7.01 p.m. Pacific Time. So if you're just tuning in, um, the date is also 6.14 currently. So if you're watching this on a Sunday evening while you're drinking a cold one and get the grill fired up, it's no longer live. So <clears throat> there you go. So this is uh, gear and uh, utensils, uh, live chat. I don't really like doing gear reviews, so I thought this might be a nicer way to do it, or at least a different way of doing it, rather than just doing videos on stuff. I've got all my things right here out of camera. I've got my scale, in case you want to know how much things weigh. So... I see there's nobody watching, so I will s just jump right in utensils. Okay, so. <clears throat> probably one of these things I use the most as far as utensils is the titanium spork. It pretty much is my go-to. Um, Alf3553, how you doing, buddy? Glad you tuned in. Where's the part where it shows how many people are watching? So anyway, uh, Tiny Team Spork by Light My Fire. Probably one of my favorite go-to carry utensils. Getting a scale ready. A whopping 0.7 ounces. Pretty much goes with me every, almost every time I go out. It really depends on the trip, but it's been a really solid piece of utensil. Um, another item is I got these at a dollar store. They're, it was basically like 50 cents or a dollar, I think it was, for two forks and two spoons so if you are looking for good cheap utensils I like these, in fact I've been rotating them in my kit I mean it's 1.3 ounces sometimes I'll bring just one or sometimes I'll bring just a spoon which is 1.2 ounces so Pretty decent silver, I think. You know, and for the cost, you know, I'm and, and I have a spare. I have a spare fork and spoon. So, if, you know, if Bigfoot stole my spoon fork, well, I just go and grab another one. Uh, hello, I am, I am a toe. I hope I didn't butcher your name too badly. I just realized I got to make a quick change here. Should have been ready to go with this. Okay. Ito shorthand for alcohol. Oh, right on. Long story for glad I made it this time. I'm glad you made it too. Going over. So basically, if you missed the beginning of the video, I'm doing um, gear talk on uh, cookwares and utensils. It was uh, requested by a viewer, one of my subscribers. Hello, Dane. So. Rather than doing the uh, videos on gear, I thought I would just turn on live and just show you what I've got. So if you missed the beginning of it, check back in after the video gets posted. 
the rage head. What's up with you tonight? Uh, what's what up for you tonight? What's that about? What's that about blades? Hang on. It's kind of off the screen. What's up with you tonight? Blades tonight? Not quite sure I get. I think it, it's like running off the screen on my on my chat part. I like to design video the last one. We'll watch the posted video. Yeah, I just check back in. Uh, likes likes eBay ninety nine. Hello. Uh, yeah, you can always go back and check out the beginning if you missed the beginning. Hi, with Mike. How you doing? So continuing on, if you have any questions, just shoot out. Um, just fire away with any questions. I'm just going over utensils first. Just what I have and what I like. Uh, I have the Sprongs. Light my fire. I I you know I I like them. I thought they were okay. I I rarely use them now. So they just the real 111T gave these to me. So actually what happened was he, I was sort of on the fence about it. He said he'd loan me a pair to check out, but I forgot to mail them back. And then he just said, don't worry about it. So I kind of felt bad. Looks looks at knives on DLT. Knives shit for free. Oh, yeah. I'm actually going to do a live on uh, knives at some point. But today I'm just doing cookware. So sprongs are, you know, pretty nice. Honestly, I had... I, I didn't really enjoy the eating part because, well, I'm sure you could just pick stuff up and move it, but the actual, like, getting it in your mouth, like, I could have just used a fork and just ate normally, so. But they are pretty cool. I don't know if he's come out with a, I, I heard he's going to come out with a titanium one at some point, but I haven't seen it, but, so. <coughs> Oh, and the sprongs, the weight of those is, uh, uh, 0.7 ounces for the sprongs, for both of them, so, but that, that can't be right, 0.7, I guess it is, no, this is 0.8, so, I mean, they don't really, they don't really weigh a lot, so. Uh, another utensil that I've been using, I've been using the Lexan uh, silverware. I got these at REI. I picked up the long one for getting down to the bottom of the mountain house ba uh, bags. Been pretty, uh, pretty decent. And then because they're only a dollar, I just picked up an additional spoon and then just an additional fork. So, pretty decent. The fork only weighs 0 0.4. The spoon is 0.4. And then the long one is a 0.5. So, I mean, they're only a dollar. So, if you melt one or lost one, you just go replace it. I think they still have them. They might have gone with another style, but I've just been carrying these around. I actually have some uh, light my not light my fire, they're um, I think they're MSR, the alum stamped aluminum, but I should carry those in my work bag now, carry a clothespin with, why is my live chat being all dumb? There we go. Jeez. I really like the live videos. Um, missed the last one, but I will watch the posted video. Cool. <coughs> Let's see. The Rage Head looking for knives on DLT trading and knives shipped for free. Are you looking for knives? Right on. 
I carry a clothespin with me when I hike to take hot cups and pots off the stove. Works well. Yeah, that would work really well. Um, also, I've just used my bandana, which I always carry, or I just use the Lesman Blast. So I'll just pick it up. This too, and I've not used it much, but I found it at a uh, restaurant supply store. It's just a little scraper. I was thinking I could scrape out pots. I know MSR has one with like a brush and whatnot, but 0.6 ounces for this. I think it was like a dollar or a dollar ninety nine. But I you use it to scrape out like bannock pans. That's that's pretty much the utensils I use most. This one most of the time I carry. Carrying a clothespin, that's an interesting idea because you could actually use it for hanging up stuff if you have a ridge line as well. So not just for pots and pans, but for also also for other things. Like if you had to hang up a shirt or something, you could just use a clothespin. So multi-function item. But hike with Mike to scrapers were awesome. You use them with my cast iron skillets. Even an old credit card would work. Yeah, I bet it would. Or uh, even an old, maybe a gift card too. Because you're going to throw them away anyway, so. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> there. Uh, wet the whistle. Alright. So, I've been using this a lot lately. You can see the, uh, the uh, burn in, the uh, seasoning. This is the Pademo, I think it's called. The Carbon steel skillet I bought from Ben's Backwoods. Really been liking this pan. I bought it to make bannock in, but I ended up cooking it, using it to cook um, other things like um, like sausage. And I've been cooking. Um, uh, what was the other thing I cooked in here? Yeah, I like this frying pan too. Eighteen dollars before shipping, and I, I, I never felt like I was getting. Uh, ripped off in the shipping from Ben's Backwoods, so I just had to season it in the oven with just some olive oil. And I just threw it in there for a couple hours, just baked it in, cooked pancakes in there. Linguisa pan, that's what it was, yes. Missed me in your video. What is the preferred stove you use? Actually my preferred cooking method is actually fire. As far as stoves go, I'll just use whatever. I mean, I might do a live on stoves, but I'm not really the stove guy. So check out Shane Coffee's website or website YouTube page. He does he does a lot of stove work, a lot of videos on stoves, which is really interesting. My preferred stove. Texas Nomad, how you doing? I started carrying tongs after watching your videos. You know. What's funny about the tongs is, and I forgot to bring some out, but I actually came across those on accident. I, I we were uh, we had a big cooking grate we were cooking bacon on, and I was using the tongs to flip the bacon, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I uh, I used um, the tongs. I was started picking up wood with it around uh, that had burned around the campfire around the camp because I when my hands weren't getting too hot, and I was like, man, that's really handy. And I started doing it more and more, and it worked really well. I mean, I was really surprised how well the tongs worked. Uh, Alf commented, I think you made pancakes in the pan first. Actually, I tried making a bannock in this pan first. I was, there's a video from um, Ray Mears' uh, Canoe Journey, and he made a bannock in a pan, which I wanted to try his version because it looked freaking delicious. So that was the first time using it. Then I kind of shelved it for a while and then broke it out again for, I think it was the second thing I cooked was pancakes. So really, really good pan. So, and not very expensive. I mean, under 20 bucks. I think this pan is a pound. Yep, 15.9. So one pound, I mean, yeah, it's a pound, but. If you're doing a short hike or you're not very far from the car, which oftentimes I'm not, I would bring this. So, hike with Mike commented, I have used chopsticks from a restaurant to use as tongs and then throw them in the fire when I'm done. That's, yeah, I like using chopsticks. Excuse me. 
I need to get some chow. You can just go to a hell. You can just go to Pan Express and buy a bowl of whatever and just ask for some chopsticks. So. Yeah, chopsticks, no drop. All right. So moving on. A little dirt. Uh, one thing I cooked a lot in is canteen. This is the Pathfinder canteen. I actually don't have the full set. I just have the canteen because someone was selling their set, and I bought the set but kept the canteen and sold the rest off. So you can see all the the use and marks on it. See, so I don't I don't buy new gear, hold up new gear, and say, "Look at this great pan." I actually have use and wear and tear, and you've seen these in video too. So canteen, I haven't been using it as much. In fact, I'm gonna go right to the next item here in a minute. It's uh, 9.5 ounces. I've actually got an idea for canteen cup Tuesday. I just need to get out to the woods again as soon as I can and try it. And then I have the Bearded Burton. How you doing, Jonathan? Glad you showed up. I love the canteen, too. And then the uh, the lid. I think it was the... What lid was this? I think it was the the Rothko lid. Actually, is a perfect fit on here, so your water will boil faster. Uh, hike with Mike. Awesome. That is a canteen that the water bottle fits in. Yeah, I don't have the water bottle, though. When I started, I used the canteen, which I might do another gear video on uh, water containers, so that might be one of them. I'll have to make a list. But I started off with the canteen, but ended up switching to um, a camelback, but then I ended up just going back to the plastic Nalgene because it just, you know, it works. I mean, so that's a little canteen with a lid, and it weighs 11.6. Uh, so love the canteen. I got to start getting out and do some canteen cup Tuesdays with this. Uh, Beard of Burton, Lost Wild Outdoors has a nice plastic one that fit in that cup. Yeah, I actually have a plastic canteen, but I'm not going to run off and go get it. But I mean, it's, there, was a, there was a time when canteens were cheap, but man, every time I go to the store now, canteens are really shot up in price. I mean, this is the first canteen I bought. I bought it at, um, there is a Army Navy surplus store in downtown Seattle. So I went down, it's got the butterfly handles, which I really liked. And I think, I think you can see it, but it says U.S. stamped on the back. Let's see, right there. I bought this for like four ninety five or something. Yeah, I like the uh, Texas Nomad comment. I love the Canteen Cup Tuesday idea. Me too. I need to start getting out there and do it. I got a great idea for the, my first Canteen Cup, but this is the first one I bought. It was five dollars. You know, four dollars ninety five cents or four dollars and ninety nine cents. Really cheap. Unfortunately, the no the Pathfinder lid does fit on. The Rothko lid does fit. But I bought another lid that didn't fit at all, so I just, you know, it sat on there all weird, and it would, it would, you know, because you can just uh, catch it on the lip and shut it. But it's not even a tight fit, really. I mean, but you know, it's not that big a deal. As long as you can set it, I mean, you could use foil too. So, um, hike with Mike. Florida Survival Boy and Carolina Chris do canteen cup cook cooking videos. Yeah, I just saw Manland. Uh, 121, I think it is. Doing one. What's his channel name? Man, yeah, Manland121 did a Canteen Cup Tuesday, and I thought that was a really cool idea, so I need to jump on that. So, this is the first Canteen. I, I use this thing a lot, and I really haven't been using it as much, but I've, I've been kicking around the idea of just adding it to the rotation and start rotating all my gear. So, because if, 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 if it was a question of what you need to do an ice cream canteen cup Tuesday. Ice cream, yeah. It's a good idea, Jonathan. Really good idea. Because I actually would go along with uh, the idea that I have for the first one. So, this one you'll probably see a lot, have been seeing a lot, is the Snow Peak Kettle 1. Uh, the real 111T, when he loaned me his sprongs. 
which are here, which I forgot to return because I'm a dick. Um, he actually sent me this with it. I mean, I think it was one of his spares, or he wasn't using it. So I've been using this a lot. This lid as a handle for the bale, which I've done in the video, and the handles. Really, and a nice pour spout. This is the pot I cooked the mac and cheese in during my day outing of fire and lunch. This is the very same one. I just use a little uh, SOS pad, and I just take it to the sink, and just scrub the hell out of the sides. It's been a really good cook pot, though. I, I, I first time I looked at it, I was like, eh. but then I really just, you know, kind of just fell in love with it. So I've, I've been using this quite a bit, and it weighs uh, nine point one ounces. Uh, he actually sent me a picture. Uh, Real well, Real One Eleven T had a uh, Coleman strap that went around it, and uh, to hold the lid down, and also the bail and the handle. So I need to do that. Let's see. No, Texas no man. How would you take ice cream out in the bush? Actually, you would. Um, I'd say saw Manland do a video on this. He actually made ice cream. He just brought out some ice, and I have a little Coleman um, cooler. So I can just pack out the ice and what I need it, and then you can just mix the ingredients and then pack it and put it in ice, and then when it's chilled, you have ice cream. So looked really cool. I think there's a little kit you can buy. Let's see. Oh. Alright. I'll jump right into this. <clears throat> then there's my MSR 1.1 liter stowaway pot, which is my primary Bannock making pen. And in here, of course, it has a lid, which I like. And this is where I do my bannock in. So I have two bowls, one that Nathan gave me, and then this is the MSR. I bought it from REI, about eight bucks for this. So this is where I bake the bannock in, and then I just mix it in this. But if I end up not mixing it, I can just put food in here and just eat out of it. So it weighs uh, three point three ounces. They have a um. A titanium one, but you know, I, I don't have any problem with stainless steel, and I don't really care about the weight that much. I mean, you mean my your body's gonna tell you what you can carry and what you can't. So, you know, if you can't carry it, um, you know, be, find a different system. But you know, this has just worked really well. Let's see, Oregon Coast Prepper, how you doing, brother? Mountain House Ice Cream Bar, I've had those, and they're okay. Nathan is a good dude. You should come up and hang out sometime. We'll go out in the woods and burn stuff. Uh, the Real 111T. How you doing, brother? I was actually just talking about you. Did you ever watch the video on making a wire hanger for the MSR pot? I, I have seen a couple of videos on making a wire hanger pot. You just you hang it here and you just stretch it like this. Or something like that. Or you put a chain between these two and, and dangle it. See when it costs to. Oh yeah. So one question I get often is how do I elevate the bannock pan inside the pot? Which you know you can see all the use and wear and tear. I've actually seen uh, questions posted about you know how do you get your cookware you know clean again? But I happen to actually like the way cookware looks when you use it. I like the fact that it has, you know, burn marks, and I just dig the way it looks because it shows use. And it always kills me when people hold pots up and they're like, "This thing is great, but it's brand. It looks new." It's like, "Well, don't you ever use it?" So this is the rack that I bake my bannock pan on. It basically sits in there like this. And I actually did a video called. Two dollar stove stand because this thing was a dollar seventy nine at an Asian market, and what it is, it's a steamer rack. So I could literally set this in here like this, and then well maybe not this one, but 
put something on top and then steam it in the pot. Except this stands up a little too high, but you know, I mean, it's almost a perfect for underneath. See? And I've actually put this directly in the fire and it's still holding up. But so, what I'll do is with this pot, I will go bannock rack which fits in there perfect, which was an accident. You can see how it sits in there. Then I mix up my bannock, a little olive oil, pop it right in, and just stick the lid on. And then there you go. And actually, in my last live, someone suggested a s'more bannock, which I'm still going to do. But, man, just such a great system. And this pot is only $20. This pot Nathan gave to me for free. And then this was a dollar seventy nine, so I'm looking at twenty two dollars, nothing. And then there you go. So about twenty three bucks, maybe twenty four with tax. And the the weight of this is uh, one pound, three point eight ounces. So very light. And if you didn't have I'm going to catch up on comments here in a minute. If you didn't have the rack here, which I realize is kind of tough to find. I looked on Amazon, couldn't find them. Nothing wrong with using a piece of foil and just smash it flat. And just set them inside the pot, which I can't really show because they slide to the bottom. But you can use three small rocks too. And just set the thing in there. Just like that and then just pop the lid on so you don't have to have you don't have to have that so that's my Bannock cookware so MSR 1.1 go away pot catch up on catch up on comments here Uh, Barry Burton commented, that's an important piece of kit. Excuse me, Bannock Rack, agreed. Foil works too. Hike with Mike, do you use native plants for plates in your area? And in my area, we have palm fronds as plates, and we don't have to pack plates. Um, there might be, I don't know what ones are safe to eat off of, if, that's, if you can eat off of them. So... If I'm not sure, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to take a chance of getting sick. Uh, it, it could be fine, though. Uh, you could use those stainless steel pedal steamers. Okay. S'mores Bennett with eye cream. Yeah. Uh, Lars Londian. How you doing, brother? I think you need more huckleberries for your bannock. I do. The, the huckleberry bannock is probably one of my favorite bannocks to date. I mean, the bacon, of course, is going to be the king, but man, that, that huckleberry was, oh, so good. You need a little bit more air gap between pans. I, you know, honestly, I've never had any problem with that rack. I mean, it gets a little toasty at the bottom, but that could just be because of the heat. I mean, it's not a huge, you know, it's not a huge gap, but it, it seems sufficient. And I've had some very nice golden brown... Uh, Bannock's come out before, so I think it might just be a little too much heat underneath. That's yeah, just cooking it. When I cooked it over a Drangia stove, it kind of toasted the bottom a little bit more, but you know. So it could just be heat, but you know, with, with, when you're cooking with fire, and as Raymer said in his Bannock videos, I mean, everything, everything takes into account, you know, the fuel, the temperature in the air, the uh, way the wind is blowing, so <clears throat> the real 111 T commented. The Pathfinder skill is a bomb for twenty dollars. I've not seen that one. Honestly, I haven't been to the Pathfinder webpage, and I don't think I've been there yet this year. I just, I just don't shop there. I pretty much feel like I'm good to go on gear. I don't really feel like I need to buy more. Uh, have you tried putting coals on the top to brown the bannock top? I have not because I've, it's always been, it's always browned up pretty nicely, so. 
Uh, Texas Nomad, I agree. The Pathfinder skill is great. Both of them, cool. I haven't, I haven't seen them, but maybe I'll go over and take a look. Uh, Nomadic Hunter, you can use your flint and steel on the bottom of your MSR Seagull pot. Is what I did. Oh yeah, use flint and steel for your your steel striker. I can see that. I mean, you could also just use a couple of rocks too. I mean, it doesn't have to be any fancy, anything fancy, as long as it works. All right. <clears throat> Every time I try to cook Bannock, it has been an epic fail. Hike with Mike. Oh, so, how are you making it? You should do a video on making Bannock hike with Mike, and I'll check it out. It could just be, how, is it overcooking? Is it just not coming out right? You know, the, mi the mix should, should be an important factor. I, uh, Texas Nomad asks, are you still liking your Mike Charlie pack? I am, actually. I just had it out the other day. In fact, I'm going to do a video on packs at some point, too, so it's, it's on the list. <clears throat> Man, I'm going to horse from talking. Uh, Alf3553, Pathfinder, and MSR, uh, MSR Alpine Fry Pan are very similar. Okay. Cool. You can make a ban. Let's see. The real 111T, you can make a bannock and a fry pan with a lid, lid, just like a big pancake. It seems to me that rocks with uh, less heat conductive than aluminum foil balls, which, are the, uh, which is the idea. Um, I, I think once you get your... You know, I might have to test that. I might have to do a video and try that. You know, because why not? I think the only idea is that you're, you're just elevating the, your pot off the bottom of the pan so it's not not getting hit with direct heat because you're, you're basically turning your pan into an oven. So, I don't know, because I wouldn't just fill the whole bottom with rocks. I'd only throw in a couple of them just to elevate, uh, just to elevate the pan off the bottom. So, it's almost like it's floating. So, but that's an interesting idea. Using, I, I might just try it with rocks. Just to see if I can get, the, trick, the trick is finding three about equal sized rocks to use, so. But if there's a will, there's a way. Otherwise, it suck if they had moisture in them and they blow up inside your oven, spattering your bannock with pebbles. Yum. Let's see. Uh, Lars Wanian, absolutely love a nice cast iron Dutch oven. Oh, yeah. In fact, I just fired up my cast iron pan to make some pork chops for dinner. But of uh, the weight, you know, if you're if you're if you're going in a vehicle, the weight doesn't matter. I mean, if you're a hundred feet from your car, you know, take whatever you want. I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't backpack it. But see, the real one of T right, and then also said, what about cast uh, aluminum Dutch oven? I've not used one of those. <coughs> uh, Lars Lanyan commented, "My tiny, uh, my super tiny 500 milliliter Dutch oven is over a pound. Wow. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but you know, if you drop that sucker, I mean, you wouldn't, you you wouldn't even, it wouldn't even break or anything. Like, fight off aliens with it. <laughs> uh, let's see, hike with Mike. Oh yeah, I have rocks explode around the campfire. It is like shrapnel. I've never had a rock blow up on me." It has yet to happen. Knock on wood. The aluminum Dutch oven transfers heat too fast and, and typically burn. Oh, okay. The edges. Oh, Manland 121. How you doing, brother? I actually just was talking about you a little bit ago. So, also, if you're just joining me, uh, if you missed the beginning, once I post this video, you can just go back and watch the rest. So, talking about cookware. So I actually had this out today, but I got another spoon. I just haven't had a chance to wash it yet. But there is the good old uh, Bjorn and Burton. Yeah, good question, no man. And where did you find the feather? The feather? Oh, I think I missed the question. 
Oh, uh, I want to know what brand your black hat felt hat is. It's a Pendleton black hat. And I found it at a Western uh, Western uh, Western um, supply shop. They had uh, cowboy boots and saddles and whatnot. They had a big old rack of hat, a rack of hats. So I went in and just kept trying them on to one fit like a glove. Paid them whatever they wanted. Took it home. And the feather. Okay. And where did you find the feather? I found the feather in Eastern Washington. It's a drier. Once you get over the mountains, it's very dry over there. But there. Are, it's a uh, osprey feather, but don't tell the authorities because it's illegal to have it. It's actually I just insist that it's a chicken feather. So let's see. Good question. Lars Lundy in the small 500 milliliter Dutch oven is what we made the scalloped potatoes in. Man, those scalloped potatoes are delicious. And like with Mike, the only rock we have in Florida is limestone, and they're filled with moisture. Ouch. Uh, Manline 121, I've had several rocks blow up on me. That would kind of suck. Cookware, that's a good subject. And I have you and another shadow. Oh, great. Thank you, brother. I just watched your video today. The, um, man, those fried chicken and frog legs. Oh, man, those are good. I love hats. I always have to buy a new one. I have to buy a new one. One of those things I probably spend too much money on. You know, honestly, I didn't actually used to like hats that much, but then I started to wear them more at work, and then I just really, I just really started liking them more. And then I happened to find another brand of the same style of hat at uh, a local Fred Meyer store we have here, and I just wore it to death. And then one day I was out um, on a hike, and I sat on top of my Jeep and drove away, and it was gone. I don't know what happened to it. So, real eleven, uh, real one eleven T. I'm putting a cook se cook set together for a buddy who's getting into car camping. I picked the MSR one point six Seagull and the Pathfinder pan, capable, capable system, a little over forty dollars. I think you should do a video on that, dude. That sounds like a good set. I'm a boonie hat guy. Right on. So yeah, real eleven T video, buddy. Alright, so, <clears throat> I'm sure you'll all recognize this piece of cookware. Dun, dun, dun. I had this out today, the Stanley Cook Set. The Manline 121 hats are cool, just like Doctor Who said bow ties are cool. Yeah, right on. So I joined the Green Cup Club, glad to be here. Stanley Cook Set, which, you know, this was a Christmas gift for my mom, and I've been... I've been using it off and on, but I wouldn't really call it a good for cooking, but more for boiling water, but I use it when I can. It's a great system. And I love the green cup. So it's dirty though, because I used it in a video I shot today. Which probably won't even be up for a couple weeks because I've got I try not to upload too often. So I don't want to bomb the feed with videos because I know it's like sometimes I know how tough it can be to, to catch up and watch all the subs. But, you know, I didn't melt the green tab though because I put it in the fire. I just haven't had a chance to rip it off of there and put an O ring on there, which I have an O ring someplace. I just got to figure out what I did with it. So. Like with Mike Stanley Cook set is what I have. Rock on. It's a great set. I mean, I really like it. Uh, Lars Lanyan, Food Choices, the real 111T. Those are great pans. Uh, nice. I think he meant to say good choices. Agreed. Video. What about 20 foot scarves? Oh, yeah. Scarves are cool. Respect. Respect for the scarf. Uh, woods. Good choices, not food choices. Now what else have I got for cookware? So I actually found these recently. So I was gonna do a video on my Bannock set, but when I filmed it, I just I hated the video, so I just deleted it. I actually found these at an Asian market not far from me. And all they are is they're a steamer rack. 
high steamer rack, stainless steel, dollar seventy nine. It's got little legs on it. Nice and round, not too big. I'm thinking good size for like a steak or something. Do I need to do that? Oh yeah, um, likes eBay ninety nine said O ring for the Stanley Cup. Uh, Lars, have a good evening, buddy. So the Stanley Cook set has a green tab here on the top. Unfortunately, mine I set it in the fire. I put the you know I was making some hot chocolate and I set the lid on because it boils faster, and the fire melted it. So I was going to pull this off and put an O-ring, like a keychain O-ring on here. So I wouldn't have to worry about it melting anymore. And then I could take a stick or a utensil and just pick it up, pick the lid up if it got too hot. So O-ring for Stanley. Uh, Oregon Coast Prepper said that would work for your Bennick. Your Asian market has better stuff. Uh, Texas Nomad commented, your Asian market has better stuff than ours in Texas. Uh, that's too bad. See, they got these little ones, too, and I use this one today. I put my uh, Trangia underneath it, and I just set this on top. And I got this for $1.49, so it's a smaller version than the other one I have. Which I had to put away, so I have to dig out now. So this is the regular one I use, and then there's a smaller version. So I usually use these for Trangia stoves because they're they're really good for that. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Leave it like that. That's custom. Cooks that video. Leave what? Leave what like that? Oh, the Stanley lid. Oh, yeah, it's custom. All right, you know, I could, I could leave it like that and just see how long it will go. It does have its own unique appearance. I was just going to yank it off when it got hot, but I forgot. I took it off the fire and forgot, so. And I had my other Stanley Cook. I like that it comes with two cups. And one item I get a lot of heat for in my videos is the measuring cup. Can't tell you how many times I've gotten comments, oh, get rid of, just get rid of the measuring cup. Like, well, why? It's, it weighs a whopping. What's the weight? Point 0.7 ounces. I mean, that's that's it. And it's so handy. Measure measure your uh, mountain house water. You don't put too much water in it because some of the meals, if you get too much water in there, soupy and they're not as good. And it, and it fits perfect. Did you like the Stanley Cook set? I mean, you couldn't ask for a better fit. It's money. So, two weeks are on, I guess. Uh, Manland commented, likes Bay 99 O-ring. Why would you need one? I think he meant for the uh, Stanley lid. I could pop off the uh, melted green tab that was on here and go with an O-ring so it wouldn't melt. I'm going to leave it on there now. Um, isn't there a metal pin in that tab on the Stanley? Uh, yeah, there's a... There's a... Uh, this right here. And then you... Squeeze them together. And you bring the handle around, and it locks, and it just kind of sits on there, like that. 
and you just pull it back and you push the ring down so you don't have to worry about the, the pot handle moving on you which I've had that happen, I've had it in my canteen so you just squeeze these together and bring it around which is a really nice design feature so you don't, you, you know, you don't have to worry about the handle being in the way in, in your pack But I had this damn thing on on one outing. I, I forgot to lock this piece here down, and I, I picked it up full of water, and it fell forward. So uh, let's see. Isn't there a metal pin tab on the sailing kit? Yeah. Metal thingy. I need seem to remember having to drive a pin out of the plastic tab. Well, maybe I did. I actually haven't really looked at it that closely. As I drop it. Yeah, I think there is like a little metal pin down in, down in there. But I'm going to leave it on now. Let's see. G I G S I Solos is a great set. I'm sure it is. I just don't have one. You know, but I've been. I I feel like I've got enough cookware for now. So let's see. Manland 121 commented. Okay, let me state here now. If you melt the green tab and you're stealing, you have your too big a fire. Once you melt one, like we do, just add a key ring. Yeah. Uh, fire may have been a little bit too big, but. As I recall, it doesn't because I I melted it on video, sort of. It was during my um. We had John Campbell, the Arizona Bushman, out uh, with us. It was Nathan and I, and uh, him, Nathan and I, and I made I made some hot chocolate for the two of us and used my Stanley Cook set. But I got this piece here; it was too hot. That was boiling water. Uh, real eleven T, never enough cookware. Well, you know. It, it maybe not, but you know it comes down to where do I keep it then? I'm you know I'm starting to run out of places to store gear. In the full threaded position, it folds flat, but the half threaded position, it state it stands up for easy grabbing. Okay. Never enough cookware. Yeah. Let's see what I have not showed. I have my Guyot bottle. Stainless steel. Uh, I got this at Cabela's when you could still get them. I haven't really been carrying it much. I've just been carrying a Nalgene. I have too much gear. Yeah, me too. Well, I'm. I don't really have room for more gear. You know, I, I like this Stanley um, 38 ounce uh, Gaia bottle. But I found boiling water to be a real pain in the ass. Cause I did a whole weekend where I brought one full container from home and boiled all the rest and it just was a pain I think I'd much rather filter let's see I I am I am a toe sorry I'm butchering your name uh, commented but always seemed to need one more thing yeah yeah, yeah I think this frying pan was like one of the last things I bought just so I could make Bannock on it but ended up using it for other things let's see uh, proof CG doling sorry if I butchered your name my first live video thanks for the opportunity thanks for showing up appreciate it if you've missed the beginning of the video um, I will be I you can always go back and watch the beginning that you missed Caffeine, uh, caf, caffeine, and caffeine. Sorry, bad with names. Uh, your thoughts on cast iron pots with legs versus without legs? I, don't know, I could kind of see the benefit of both, maybe, because you know the legs would ele elevate your pot up off the coals a bit more. But I think s storing it would be a little bit hard, a little more difficult. I actually don't own a cast iron pot with legs. 
or without, I have a cast iron frying pan, but I don't have any cast iron camp cookware. Um, Manland commented, the Stanley Cup has one fault, and that's the green tab. Those green cups rule. I agree with you, brother. Green cups are awesome. Green cups are really cool. The real 111T uh, need mainline backpacking cook set. Bug out bag cook set, vehicle cook set, group car camp cook set. You know, <clears throat> I don't have I don't have a set in a car at all. I have, I have no gear in the car. I have no gear. I don't have a bag sitting by the door waiting for the waiting to bug out because I just don't think I personally don't feel like it's necessary to be honest. Usually, I don't even keep a pack ready to go. I, I usually will pack per the trip, and then I'll think, okay, what gear do I want to take? I'll take the no peat kettle today. Or maybe I'll take the canteen when I do a canteen cup for uh, Tuesday. Maybe I'll bring out a bannock pan. Or the Stanley. And if I was going on a trip, if I was going backpacking, I'd probably mostly take, you know, freeze dried meals, and then I could just boil on this. And maybe one bring one cup along and then my measuring cup for accurate measuring. But other than that, I wouldn't bring a lot of I wouldn't bring a lot of cookware. I could probably even get away with just this, because I could still boil, you know, like hot drinks in here. Pour it into a cup. And heck, I could just take the cup, put it right in here, although it doesn't fit super tight. But I was remembering that strap idea. So I could strap this down. Is this anything sideways? No. So it really just depends on the trip. Uh, Manland, does anybody have experience with a Dakota fire pit? I've not done one. Yeah, it does look like a lot of digging. So, I'm Oto. Off topic, the wood you collected and split in your previous video, you were drawing it by the fire. Did you burn it after the video ended or stash it for the next outing? I burned it all. Every piece of wood there I burned. In fact, I have uh, the final part in a video. Actually, I should have it scheduled for upload for tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. So, yeah, I have the, I have, I did burn all that wood. So. Real 11 T. I hear the zebra pot lids fit the kettle one. Oh, cool. I don't have the zebra pot yet. I do like them, I just don't have one. So, Imoto, Mainland. I like this fire pit. I do that while stealth camping. Cool. Oregon Coast Prepper. Cast iron, no legs. It's a pot with legs. It's an oven. Let's see. Cast iron, no legs. It's a pot with legs. It is an oven lids. Our different oven has top to hold fire pot down. Okay. I'm a toe. Cool. I look forward to seeing it. Ernest Chani, how you doing, brother? When is your next class? And what will be the subject on? Class? You mean uh, when is my next live? I think I'm going to try to do a Wednesday live. Or every Wednesday, I'm going to try to do a live around 7 p.m. Pacific time. Sorry, Manland. Autocorrect is out. Mainland. I love auto auto autocorrect, but man, sometimes they can really turn on you. All right. I think the only thing I really haven't talked about as far as my consistent cookware, and I really haven't been using this very much lately, but I have a titanium, Bargo titanium uh, cup, which I've used in a few videos. I bought this, you know, so it comes with a lid. I don't really cook in this, but what I've done is I've made um, some. I did a Hawk Vittles uh, stew in here. I just put the water in, put the stew meat in, put the lid on, 
I made a cozy out of Reflectix, which there are a lot of videos on. And I just drop it down inside. And just set the lid on. And I've, I've got another piece that just sets on top. And I've rehydrated uh, stews in here. And I've also made uh, hot drinks like hot chocolate and tea. And I just boil the water in the canteen and pour it in here. And I'll just drink out of this while I'm cook put the canteen back on the fire and start cooking my meal. So, really like the Vargo titanium pot. So, let's see. Uh, Manland commented, I'm going to tell, I like the fire style because when you are finished, just push the dirt over the holes and burn and damn your snuff to one fire. I can see that. The real 111T commented, anyone that wants to experiment with a transgenic system, I recommend the TrekMate alcohol stove kit on Amazon. I substitute the actual transgenic burner instead of the China one. Okay. I'm a, I'm a toe commented indeed and for those for the most part it's pretty incognito set up for the fire below grade. Nice. So I usually just go out, I do most of my cooking on public uh, campgrounds so I'm not really worried about you know leaving no trace or you know big dig in a hole I'll just go out and use the existing fire ring and just collect the wood make my fire and run from there. I think I've got over all my cookware now. Of course, I did uh, boil water in the good old soup can, which I'm thinking about doing a little bit more just because I see nothing wrong with using old soup cans. And they're pretty much free, so I mean, you gotta buy the food, but. You're repurposing what would go into the recycling container, so. I'm a toe and comment indeed, and for the most part, it's pretty incognito set up with the fire below grade. Yeah, I can see that. Well, we're we going an hour, 57 minutes. Good times. Um, Amato asks, E curves, do you wash your cookware in the stream or take it home with you? I will do both. I will clean it up in the stream if there is one. And then I'll just take it home. And then wash it up there. And then, you know, I'll scrub it out the best I can at the, at the river or stream or whatever, water base. And then when I go home, I'll actually scrub it out with a, um, you know, an actual scrub, like SOS, SOS pad on the outside to get rid of all the, the uh, burned on fire. Hey, Chris, Cheesehead Chris, how you doing, brother? So I'll do both. Clean it out in the woods or by the stream, best I can. Um, actually, in a video coming up, I actually used, uh, I took it down to the stream, I took some sand and Excuse me, I just took some sand and rubbed it on the bottom. Cleaned it up best I could. Excuse me. And then you know, what I'll do is I'll bring out a... Um, excuse me again. A uh, grocery store plastic bag and I'll just put everything in the bag and it keeps everything clean. It keeps the inside of my pack clean. Uh, Real 111T, carry a coarse stainless steel scrubby and a... Soda bottle, preformed tub of dish soap. You can deal with anything. Yeah, I've also just taken a sponge with a. Um, uh, the back is a, the scouring pad, so it's a, the sponge, and then with the the pad on top, I'll just take a pair of scissors and cut one in half, and just bring out the square, and just scrub up my pads with that. Uh, 
Uh, Oregon Coast purposes, wrap aluminum foil around pot, no smoke stain. Interesting. I've never thought to do that. I've heard of using soap, but I've never done it. Manland usually take mine home unless I'm out there for several days. Then I'll leave it overnight for the critters to lay clean. <laughs> yeah. Chris commented, ash works too. I've never used ash to clean up my cookware. See, with my job and whatnot, I'm usually only out for a day or two. So, you know, if the pot gets a little dirty, I can just wash the, out the inside in the river, creek, stream, whatever. Then I'll put water in it and boil it so the boiling will clean whatever I missed. And then I'll just dump the boiled water out and then cook again. So, that's one advantage to... Um, Um, you know, dehydrated meals, all you gotta do is pour the water into the bag and you just keep using the cookware over and over again. So. Bear country. <laughs> yeah, that would suck to wake up and have a bear licking at your cookware. You're like, oh hey, welcome to camp. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Get a dog to lick it clean. You know, I would actually like to get a dog, but I, I live in a condo, and I don't really want to live. I'll leave my dog locked up in a condo all day. It's really because I wouldn't get. I wouldn't want to get a small dog. I want to get like a, a at least a mid size or better, bigger. My faithful hiking companion. So if I had a yard for him to run around in, then yeah, dog. But I don't want to let him leave him trapped up. I'm a toe asked, when you are practicing your tarp setup, is in preparation for overnight outing you plan on taking? I've actually already done the overnighter. It's just that I haven't posted the video yet because I did that that outing. But I do have an overnighter coming up. Uh, it should be very soon, actually. So, the video is coming. I did, did an overnighter. Just right now it's the 14th, and Father's Day is Sunday, so happy Father's Day to all your dads out there. And uh, so my, my next weekend, is, this coming weekend is busy, because you know, I got to take, you know, take Dad out for dinner. I have no idea what to get him, because he's not outdoorsy at all. If he's outdoorsy, I could just get him a Stanley Cook set, and I carry Dad here. But... So, yeah. So hopefully after that, I'll be able to get out and sleep out a little bit more. The last weekend, what happened? I was, oh, I, I had stuff to do, you know. Gotta, gotta do the life thing, man. As much as I want to be out, you know, I gotta, gotta uh, not slack on responsibilities. What did I do last weekend? Can't remember. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, you can always get in one anyways. The green cups are invaluable. True, I'm not sure you'd use it though, to be honest. Real 11, uh, real 11 T. What about the new middle size cooks in store, Stanley? I've not, I've not seen those much. I don't, I don't really Google around searching for cookware. Not, not very often. Manland said, uh, I actually suggest that you all actually sleep in a nightly rainy night and test your gear you'll be surprised what you find out I sure did yeah actually I've, I've had outings where it started to rain and I've had cheap gear and cheap tents before and woke up in a puddle of water that sucked uh, Chris at she said Chris asked you went to morning woods didn't you I haven't yet now, he invited me, but the problem is he has uh, weekdays off, and I work weekdays, and he has weekend. He works the weekends, and I've got the weekends off. So I just, you know, trying to get out there. You know, trying to get together is tough. I mean, we were actually Sunday. Last Sunday, I was actually at Morningwood's uh, house, and we went. We had a... Uh, it was him and my, you know, Lars Londian. We went. We did a uh, 
cook off. We did a cook off challenge, the three of us. So I gotta still edit that video. I have the prep and cook set. I like it when person starting cooking. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see carrying like multiple people cookware for just one person. Do you use uh, video editing software before uploading YouTube? Yeah, I use um, Windows Movie Maker. You can just download it, download it right off of Windows for free. And I just been using that, and it's been working pretty well. I mean, as much as I like the idea of doing, I never mean I do want to look into getting. Excuse me. I do want to work on getting. Um, better videos um, software because there's things I'd like to be able to do I'd like to be able to throw a picture into the corner while I'm talking or you know do overlay but you know the Windows Movie Maker software which is free as long as you have Windows you just go to their site and download it it seems to work pretty well so I've just been sticking with that No. Uh, she said, "Chris asked, uh, how how does it how does it take to save a video for you? How long does it take? Uh, depends on how big the video is. I just did a big upgrade on my main computer, so actually it doesn't take as long now. It used to take a bit of time, but what I would do is I would because I've got." two screen monitors on my computer because I got a video card that can support two plus an HDMI so I can run it to my computer if I'm watching YouTube videos on a full screen but uh, if I'm editing I'll usually be on Facebook on one screen and I'll just be on the other screen editing video so while I'm going back and forth I can be doing Facebook and then editing video so I'll, what I'll do is I'll edit the clips trim them down cut them if I have to throw pictures in between whatever and I'll just throw them all together and it doesn't really take that long sometimes the having to trim the clips and you know cut out areas where you find is can be a bit tricky but um, like one time I, I was cooking, I was doing something and I dropped something and I just started swearing. Like I started just dropping a lot of f bombs and I was like, "Well, I can't put that in video," so I had to trim it all out. So I had to, I had to take like one segment and cut it down to like four different segments. Plus, I do it for time. Let's see. Man, I commented. Y'all who are watching, please hit that like button. It helps old carbs a great deal. Thank you, Man, Land. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm Otto. Do you need a wilderness or campfire permit for where you are overnighting? I do not. Uh, you need a wilderness parking permit because that's the way for the state to wring out money from you. You know, because it's like, oh, you have a hobby? Well, we're going to find a way to tax you on it. So, yeah, parking pass. But I don't need a permit for campfires. But I kind of wish they had a permit for like year-round camping because I know when there's a burn ban there's no fires but if you had a permit say you know what I'm safe here's my card they can say okay fine but they don't do that uh, how long for the upload it depends on the length of the video but what I've been doing a lot lately is I will um, load it up and then I'll just put all the tags in and link the descriptions and then I'll just select for schedule and you can just hit schedule and, it, and then you don't have to wait for it to fully upload. Um, Professor CG Doling, have your or whatever happens a new camera? I actually was using it today. It's uh, this one here. It is the Panasonic. DMC GH2. I bought this used at Kenmore, Kenmore Camera. Has a removable, removable lens, which I can upgrade these later down the road. It's a fairly nice camera. The only problem I have with the camera is there's a big, there's a learning curve with the camera. 
because it doesn't autofocus, and I've gotten really spoiled on the autofocusing. So what I'll do is I'll be filming, and, and a lot of times there is um, uh, I'll be out of focus, and I'll, I don't catch it right away because I'm so spoiled with the autofocus. So a few video, a video I shot today, there's a clip where I'm uh, standing somewhere, and um, it's I'm out of focus, and I didn't catch it on the viewfinder. So, but I have my Olympus in, and this has a viewfinder that I can flip around and see what I'm filming. So, which is pretty nice. Got a little on button here. And then you have your lens, which I can upgrade the lens, which I'll do at some point. So, I just took a picture. And it has uh, pretty nice features, which I'll go over when I get my Olympus back. My Olympus is right now at the Olympus store in Connecticut, having it repaired. So, $109, but. It's a good camera. I just I just gotta I really gotta learn the learning learning curve. And actually today, I was filming and um, I hit record, but for some reason it stopped recording and everything I shot was lost. So what are you gonna do? How do you schedule? Did you pay for the option? Scheduling a video is free. All you have to do is there's a section on YouTube. Where it says uh, public, private. If you if you click it, it'll say schedule. You just click schedule, and there'll be three options: date, time, and something else. Hey, I'll just take a look real quick. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, so it says uh, public, unlisted, private, and scheduled. So you just go down to schedule, click that, and then there's like a couple of options to schedule your uploads. So. Let's see. The real 111 T D S L R. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I'm to. They are going to start fire restrictions on public grounds around here upcoming Monday. It's supposed to hit 98 degrees, so no more campfires in the desert. We will have to go to pay campsites. Ouch! I hear you. Right? That sucks, man. That really sucks. So. I hate fire restrictions. Sucks when it happens. Agreed. Real 11 T. Cheese Ed Chris. Hmm. I don't have that on mine. Tub Buddy says I need to upgrade. I think it's a part of YouTube. So I use YouTube Capture on my phone. I, I film all my videos on cameras. Everything has been filmed on a camera. So digital single lens reflex. I think this camera has that. Is it in the camera or is it in the um, is it in the lens itself? Because I can I can focus with the lens part. That's what that is. Okay. So it's just a matter of making sure that I'm focused when I turn the camera on. I hit record, but the record will sometimes just it happened uh, twice today. I was shooting a video and I looked up and it wasn't recording. And I was like, ah! That, was, that angered me a great deal. Fortunately, it was easy to go back and redo because I, didn't have, I wasn't like talking. Real 11, Real 11 T is designed where you look through the taking lens using mirrors. Okay. 
Have you ever baked in a snow pea kettle one? It looks like it would accept for the spout. Caffeine. You know, I haven't baked in this. I'm sure you could. I wonder if my little I wonder if this little guy would fit in there. Let's find out. Oh. Perfect fit. I bet you I could film it. I bet you I could bake in here. I've seen um what is his name? K Dog Crazy had a little um like a muffin what's that thing called? A little muffin um Silicone, that's what it was. The high high temp silicone muffin thing. So I bet you I could bake a muffin in here like he was, but just by setting in a silicone silicone muffin and just setting it in here and then filling it with batter. I bet you I could get this baking. But yeah, I mean a great uh, point. Uh, Real eleven T just put a little foil or something in here. You could just put a little small piece of foil on there. It'd probably work great. So, let's see. Have you ever baked? Let's see. Professor C. Prof, prof, I think that's Professor C. G. Doling. Why not use an action camera like the cheap GoPro? Actually, the Olympus Tough Shot or the Olympus TG80 860 was my action camera. It had you had a good flip up screen and it and it was it was uh, it was my action camera but the screen went out on it so uh, caffeine it's got a lid for it flat with edges yeah plug the spout with foil have a good night carbs thanks for the information thank you for watching I'm Otto. I appreciate it uh, foil 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 how you doing? Sorry if I butchered your name. If you're just joining me, uh, once this video is posted, you can go back and watch the parts that you missed. I went over basically all my cookware that I've been using. So, of course, I had a downside. I have to put it all away, but no problem. I still have to wash out my Stanley cook set. <sighs> Foil? Okay. Foil. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I think at one minute, eight, or one hour, 18 minutes, I think that's uh, probably good enough for a uh, See, Manland, be careful. You all dry baking in your stainless steel. IT is tough on your gear and it's non returnable the damage I found out. You know, I don't know, because I've been baking in that Stanley, um, or that NSR pot. It's been a dry bake and it's it's been holding up really well. I mean, I've made, you know, dozens of bannocks in a single pan without any problem, and it's been a dry bake. I mean, it's got some discoloration, but discolorated pans don't bother me one bit. In fact, I kind of prefer the look. Gives it that rustic look. Um, the real one on the I think I have three big totes of cook sets. Wow. it's a lot of cook sets, brother. Uh, you don't have to schedule op option, Chris. That sucks. Those pots are quality. Real 11 T, agreed. Good stuff. Man, 20 bucks. I mean, most of my cookware has been about the $20 area. I don't know how much the Snow Peak kettle was, but is it around $20? I never did look. That's probably why you have people have so many cook sets, is because they're not very expensive. And you're so, uh, they're so multifunctional, too. You can boil, bake, cook. Yours was twenty five. Okay, twenty five dollars is still is very doable for what you get for it. I mean, you get a, a pot with a with a bale, so you can hang it if you want to. You have a lid for quicker boiling. 
and you have vandals. And it has a poor spout. So, you know, to me that that's money for twenty five bucks. Yeah, yeah. If Bigfoot stole mine, I'd go out and buy another one. And curses their hairy ass. Um, Manlin one twenty one commented, "Yeah, that's why I'm that's what I'm talking about. On the lower grade steel, it can actually ruin the stainless surface. Eh, if the stainless steel surface gets ruined, I mean, I don't know. I mean, would you would you say that was ruined? I mean, if it's discolored for life, eh, I can live with that. I mean, it's still functional. I I would feel okay cooking something in here like um, let's see if I get a little light." Yeah, I'd cook sausage or something in there. So, this coloration, I'm okay with. And if, and if it gets really warped and out of danger, warping is a danger. You know, if it got warped bad enough, I would just go and buy another one. I mean, they're only $20. So, $20, in my opinion, is. Not a bad price for a piece of cookware. Not as much mu as much use as I've gotten out of them. <clears throat> so, yeah. Well, I think I'm going to end it here. It's been uh, almost hour 20 minutes, so I think I'm going to call it. Get ready for work. Boo. But, you know, got to keep a roof over my head. Thank you all for watching. Thank you everybody. I want to thank you all for commenting and sticking around. It's been fun. Good times. Really been enjoying the lives. I'm going to do another one next Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific. I think I'm going to do next one on knives. So that will be my next. Next live will be knives. So let's see. Rule 111T, warping is the danger. Okay. I look forward to seeing your video, Chris. Rule 111T, cheese at USGI mountain kit is a solid kit. Rock on. Thanks. No, no, no. Discard. Discard is used, brother. Let us know it's being used. As I have always said, shiny pots mean man does not cook. Agreed. Or he's using um, nothing but stoves to cook under when I, mean, I guess so it could be totally possible but I think there'd be some discoloration somewhere because you're still cooking over fire. It's it kills me about gear reviews it's like you know guy holds up brand spanking new cookware. Hey this pot rocks. Cab seven, how you doing brother? Good to see you. Unfortunately you're showing up just as I'm ending the video so um, it's going to post, when I when I end the stream, it's going to post as a vid, so you can go back and watch the beginning, or skip ahead the parts that you want to see. I pretty much went over all my cookware. Uh, next week will be knives and cutting tools. So, I will be back next week. I might do some uh, topical videos, too. Like, I've got, an, I've got something I wanted to talk about, so... I might do, I might just throw a live out there this weekend. We'll see how it goes. Maybe Saturday night. If I'm feeling up for it. So I hope everyone has a good night. Uh, have fun at work. I doubt it. <laughs> Work's kind of a drag, so. It's people I work with. Alright. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good evening, and. When are your level? Um. Cab7 asks, when are your regular live streams? I think I'm going to do is shoot for every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific. So that's kind of my goal now is to try to do a weekly Wednesday upload. And just go, I'm going to do more on the cookware. So, or not more on the cookware, I'm going to be doing more on uh, separate gear. Like today was uh, cook sets. Next week will be knives. I might do some topical ones like um, um, other issue, other things, and just things I, you know, could have length of the video. I don't know. Just kind of wing it.
Uh, Manland commented, yeah, the shiny video that, sh that users show tells me it's the first use. Yeah, agreed. Hey, brother, the video's up now. Check it out. Manland and stuff. I will do that. I will check out your video. Yeah, so. <clears throat> yeah, I'm losing my voice. All right. Have a good uh, good night, everyone. Have a great happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. And we'll catch you in the next one. So, yeah. Shooting for every Wednesday. That's the plan.